From the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion in Los Angeles, California, the 56th Annual Academy Awards. The 56th Annual Academy Awards are proudly shared with you by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And brought to you by Revlon. Revlon, the people who help make the world a little more beautiful. And Buick Motor Division and your Buick dealer. See the all-new Buick Electra and put it to the ultimate test, yours. And AT&T, reach out and touch someone. And Atari Home Computers, discover what you and Atari can do. Again this year, crowds pack the plaza of the Los Angeles Music Center as tonight's stars arrive for the 56th Academy Awards, including the gorgeous Christy Brinkley, a special Oscar recipient tonight, Hal Roach, and award presenter this evening, Timothy Hutton, nominee Amy Irving with director Steven Spielberg. Here's the star of Gorky Park, Joanna Pakula, lovely Jane Powell, a presenter on tonight's show, Flash dance star Jennifer Beale. Best Actress candidate Jane Alexander. Matthew Broderick of War Games. Roger Moore, alias 007. Conductor composer Quincy Jones. Best Supporting Actor nominee Charles Durning. Michael Caine, nominated for Educating Rita. Nominated for Best Actress Shirley MacLaine. Tess Harper, star of Tender Mercies. And here's radiant Diane Cannon. And the coal miner's daughter herself, Sissy Spacek. Co-presenters tonight, Tommy Tune and Twiggy. And Cher, nominated actress. Glenn Close, Best Supporting Actress nominee. And presenter, Gene Hackman. As the fans gather outside the glamorous Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, international celebrities from the world of motion pictures assembled in the star-studded auditorium to honor outstanding achievement in film. Over 50 of the greatest names in Hollywood salute the brightest and the best as we present this year's Academy Awards. With tonight's Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Johnny Carson. The 56th Annual Academy Awards will begin in a moment. Conducting the orchestra in an overture of themes from this year's nominated scores, here is four-time Oscar nominee, producer, arranger, conductor, composer, Quincy Jones.
Ladies and gentlemen, three-time Oscar nominee and the 1964 winner for art direction of My Fair Lady, the president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, Mr. Gene Allen. Standing here as the president for the first time, but these awards have occurred 55 times, 55 times previously. That's a lot of films to have been made, considered, voted upon, and honored. But most importantly, films that were seen, seen and remembered by movie fans all around the world. And I'm going to throw a little note in. I was just told that tonight we have 500 million, that's half a billion people watching this show. And that makes me just a little bit. A little nervous. And in that crowd of movie fans are memories that are stored forever in the minds of young moviegoers, like Christina and Noel watching us now at a pajama party in Newport Beach, or in the minds of some very special men and women who at this moment are attending a black tie Oscar party in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And I know of a lady my age watching us from San Fernando, Phyllis, and she represents one of those moviegoers that we were so proud of. Like most movie memories, mine are fragments, bits and pieces extending back through a movie-going lifetime. You remember thing, Janet Gaynor, young, angelic, radiating love for Charles Farrell in Seventh Heaven, Douglas Fairbanks sliding down the sail of a pirate ship in a slash made by his knife. You remember Chaplin and Garbo, Laurel and Hardy, Tracy and Hepburn, Judy and James, Astaire and Kelly, Mickey and Minnie, Skywalker and R2-D2, and the lovely ladies. And again, remember, these are my memories, and they just represent those of all of you, but they are people like Ava, Audrey, Sophia, and Marilyn. And there's so many, and they're all indelible moments recorded on film. And at another time, we want to talk about the need to preserve that film. We're about to honor motion picture talent tonight, men and women who have this year added something important and lasting to everything that is already meant by the word movies. For you, for me, I want to thank them. Thanks for our movie memories. And now I turn you over to the more than capable hands of tonight's master of ceremonies, Mr. Johnny Carson. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. As you can tell if you saw our opening shot tonight, people are literally standing on their heads with excitement. <laughs> I, uh... That means a great finish. First of all, welcome. I thank you, Mr. Allen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the night of living dangerously. First of all, I'd like to thank the Motion Picture Academy for inviting me to be your master of ceremonies this year. You, uh... <laughs> You don't realize what a thrill it is for me to appear someplace without being subpoenaed. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> it has been a fun-filled year. My, uh... My personal life has been exactly like this year's Academy Awards. It, uh, started off with terms of endearment. I thought I had the right stuff. It, uh cost a lot to dress her, then came the big chill. In the past month, I've been begging for tender mercies. <laughs> now that... Thank you. Now that the therapy's out of the way, this is Oscar night. Ladies and gentlemen, you take the excitement of the Grammys, the wit, sophistication of the Tonys, Put them all together, and what have you got? I haven't the slightest idea, but it's, an, it's just an interesting question. But you know the votes are in, and the winners, of course, are a closely guarded secret. 
and the results of the balloting are known only to Price and Waterhouse and a 13-year-old whiz kid in Omaha who patched into their computer <laughs> last Thursday. Now, as those of you know who've been here the past, we've had a few problems with the show running long. But I predict tonight that this show will come in exactly on time. But don't go by me. I spent most of yesterday scraping a John Glenn bumper sticker off my DeLorean. <laughs> You people uh, who just tuned in at home, this is the Academy Awards. Warning, contents may cause drowsiness, do not drive or operate heavy machinery. <laughs> this town goes crazy at Academy. There's a fever in this town. You can always tell when it's Academy Award time out here. Even the ladies of the evening on Sunset Boulevard have been carrying signs for the past month to say, for your consideration. And the television audience for this telecast grows every year. This year, this show, or a shortened version of it, will be seen in 76 countries. And they tell me that right at this moment, I'm speaking to an international audience of 500 million people, all of whom will be on the Hollywood freeway during the Olympics. <laughs> uh, a year seems like a short time, but there are a lot of things that have changed. Who would have thought a year ago that today you'd be able to sell a full-figured bra to Mariel Hemingway. <laughs> I accept your judgment. <laughs> I think we have found a way this year to keep the acceptance speeches from uh, running too long. We have Clint Eastwood waiting in the wings, <laughs> ready to come out here and say, go ahead, make my day. If it makes your nominees feel any better tonight, President Reagan has okayed prayer at award shows. I was, uh, I was reading the list of nominations tonight, and it might be wise to retitle this program The British Open. This is, uh, this is the bit biggest British invasion since the Falkland Islands. Look at the British nominees you have. Michael Caine, Albert Finney, Tom Conti, Tom Courtney, Julie Walters. I ran into Dudley Moore backstage. It was so great to see an American. <laughs> the only Brit not nominated for Best Actor was Benny Hill. <laughs> but he was nominated for Best Actress, so it wasn't a total wipeout. <laughs> you know, if you stop and think about it, an Academy Award is God's little joke. It increases your salary one week before income tax time. <laughs> now, we all realize that fame is fleeting. This is a rather cruel business, and I think you have to keep in mind that tonight's winner is next year's question in Trivial Pursuit. <laughs> and it's, it's only too bad. It's only unfortunate that uh, everyone can't go home with an Oscar. Of course, tonight there will be winners and losers, but I would like to say there is no award for acting surprised. That joke will be very big in Tunisia. We're going there for the first time this year. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have invested in a motion picture to make a few dollars, but it's an intriguing business. Uh, MGM stockholders just received some exciting news. Metro announced yesterday that Gone with the Wind is just coming into profits. <laughs> of course, 20th Century Fox is luckier than most studios because it's owned by Marvin Davis. And in the summertime, Marvin sells shade. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a bad year for the industry in one respect. Not one of the nominated films had a character that can be sold as a doll. Now, some people say there are too many award shows. I really don't know, but I believe the Lifetime Achievement Award for Ricky Schroeder does seem a little pushy. <laughs> uh, there were some marvelous films this year. The Dresser was a strange picture. Imagine a movie today about a guy who puts his clothes on. <laughs> Under Fire was about a violent revolution that took place between the left and the right, actually filmed on location at the Screen Actors Guild. <laughs> and they're already filming The Right Stuff too, in which Brooke Shields plays the first woman astronaut. And in the big scene, Brooke takes her first untethered walk away from her mother. <laughs> right. 
I like, I like the movie Silkwood. It was, a, it was a movie that brought us face to face with an issue that concerns us all. And of course, the big dramatic moment in Silkwood comes when Kurt Russell turns over in bed and says to Meryl Streep, Honey, would you turn out the nightlight? And she says, We don't have one. And Sean Connery returned as James Bond. Now, I want you to understand I love Sean, but his, his Bond is getting just a little old. In case he's captured by the enemy, he now carries a cyanide suppository. <laughs> now, I realize you nominees are nervous tonight, and understandably so. After all, the Oscar is the highest achievement for any artist. But let's try to keep it in perspective and just think of this evening as Hollywood's version of an expensive Tupperware party. <laughs> I also realize you're concerned about the other nominees because there was some marvelous work done this year. The competition is very tough. But look on the bright side. Michael Jackson did not make a feature film. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You've been a lovely audience. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, you're very nice. I think you'll be pleased to know at this time you will not be subjected to the reading of the exciting Academy voting procedures. That's right. I know. For those of you whose life will not be complete without this dreary information, you'll find it at the end of this program. But tradition dictates that we introduce the representatives of the accounting firm of Price Waterhouse, who tabulate the ballots, supervise the secrecy and honesty of what we do here. Sound like Abe Lincoln. <laughs> Mr. Frank R. Johnson and Mr. Steve Kaplan. <laughs> we uh, normally serve the, save the heavyweight personalities for the end of the show, but this year we thought we'd get these guys out early. <laughs> and now the first presenter of the night, is a gentleman for whom the word versatile might well have been coined. He has a way with a song and dance and just about everything else. Ladies and gentlemen, Sammy Davis, Jr. In 1934, some important categories were added to the awards and some important events took place. This evening, we'll be flashing back to a few of them. For instance, in 1934, the Board of Governors of the Academy voted a special Oscar to a six-year-old girl who had charm and had a lot of joy that she brought to that particular year. It was a little Oscar for a little girl. But if the Academy had known the impact she was to have the next few years, <laughs> they would have given that gold statue a mile high. The Academy Awards 1934, Shirley was voted a special Oscar for all the pleasure she brought to moviegoers that year. Writer humorist Erding S. Cobb was the master of ceremonies. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Cobb. Mommy, can I go home now? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the former United States ambassador to the Republic of Ghana, West Africa, the most popular child star in the history of motion pictures, Shirley Temple. Certainly not very big for a 50-year-old, is it? Oh, well. Jack Haley, Alice Faye, Buddy Epson, Bill Robinson, what good friends. Bill Robinson was the first to let me know that black is beautiful. My husband of... 
My husband, for 34 years, Charlie Black, has also let me know that black is beautiful. <laughs> when I received my uh, special Oscar, the awards banquet was held at the Biltmore Hotel. The crystal and the silver were sparkling. Everyone was elegantly dressed. I was the only one in a short skirt. Jean Harlow was in long white crepe and furs. Actors Clark Gable, William Powell, and Ronald Coleman all sported their mustaches. I was bored. I wasn't hungry. I collected crumbs from hard bread rolls and made symmetrical little piles. When Irvin S. Cobb called my name, I was truly surprised. And when I returned to the table, I set the Oscar down among the breadcrumbs and inspected it carefully. Mother, did I get this for my acting? No, she said. You got it for making the most movies in 1934. <laughs> it's quantity, not quality. You know, if I could uh, have another special Oscar, I could have a nice pair of earrings. It's a very nice size if you don't have a mantle, but I'm very proud of it. And my thanks to the industry for helping me to have an enchanted and very busy childhood. 1934 was also the first year of the Music Awards for Best Score and Best Song. There were only three songs competing that year, and we'd like to remind you again of just how special they were and what a choice the voters faced. The nominees were, from Flying Down to Rio, The Carioca, music by Vincent Humans, lyric by Edward Alescu. From She Loves Me Not, Love in Bloom, music by Ralph Ranger, lyrics by Leo Robin. And from The Gay Divorcee, the Continental, music by Con Conrad, lyric by Herb Magnitson. And the winner was <clears throat> The Continental, music by Con Conrad, lyrics by Herb Magnitson. You know, it's difficult to realize, but wonderfully nostalgic to do so. But the most popular dance team of all time, first stepped onto the shiny floor of an RKO studio half a century ago, and one half of that beloved team is watching us at his home tonight, and we send our love to Fred Astaire. Here in the audience is his co-star of those wonderful years of movie magic, Ginger Rogers. May I go home now? Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley Temple Black. I just wanted to mention Sammy Davis's cufflinks tonight through the courtesy of Ed Meese. And now, 